Welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. So far you have been seeing the use of, pi, uh, the use of blocks in GNU radio in order to achieve several functionalities. We have actually not really peeked into these blocks. Of course, we have some intuition as to what happens inside the blocks. For example, if you add a block that does let us say a filtering, it essentially does convolution inside. If you add an amplification block, it just multiplies the samples and so on. On many occasions, there are situations where you may want to add your own functionality because it may be cumbersome to implement it using the GNU radio inbuilt blocks and maybe it can be expressed in a much easier fashion using some bit of Python code. In this lecture, we are going to introduce the concept of extending GNU radio using Python blocks and in particular how you can use Python blocks in GNU radio to achieve several functionality extensions that can be done using just a few lines of code. In general, the blocks in GNU radio are written in C++ or Python, C++ for efficiency, but for simple calculations, you may find that using a Python block achieves a lot of uh, extension in functionality without much effort. So, you can follow along this lecture to understand how you can make some simple embedded Python blocks that extend the functionality of GNU radio using Python. In this lecture, we are going to discover among the most powerful features of GNU radio using which you can extend the features of GNU radio by writing Python code. In particular, we are going to look at the Python block, Python, uh, you know, embedded Python block over here, which allows you to create your own block by writing just a few lines of Python, but there are several things you can achieve in a very compact way directly using Python without having to use any of the inbuilt blocks in GNU radio. This is particularly useful if there is some operation that is a little difficult to implement using just the built-in blocks. So you can write some Python to achieve some more powerful transformations with very with much ease. So let us begin. So we say control F for command F and if we type block we get the Python block which is in core miscellaneous. We drag it here. We get this block called embedded Python block. Let us actually just connect it out and see what happens. So let's actually just get a throttle control F or command F. We'll get a throttle. We'll get a, let's say a signal source control F or command F. We say signal source and we get a time sync control F or command F. We get time sync. Okay. So we connect this over here, connect this over here, connect this over here. And we double click this embedded Python block and set the example param to let's say 1.0. And let's say we try to run this. It says block example.2a must begin with a letter and may contain letters, numbers and, and so on. Okay. So I think this is not going to work. So let's double click this and actually start making some edits. So we say open in editor. So that it will open in a Python editor, your default Python editor. And as you can see, you get this particular block, okay, embedded Python block. There's a boilerplate code and you have at the beginning a string. So actually Python uses strings for documentation. So they've written embedded blocks. Each time this file is saved, GNU Radio Companion with in will instantiate the first class it finds to get ports and parameters of your block. The arguments to init will be the parameters. All of them are required to have default values. So let us remove the string. What they are saying is that this is a Python class. The first class is essentially taken by GNU Radio Companion. This class is basically a Python object definition. It is a subclass of gr.sync block, which means that this block is going to take in samples and give out samples at the same rate. They have mentioned that there are other base classes, which are basic block, decim block, interp block. So basic block is more general. Decimation interpolation block will provide less or more samples than the inputs. 
as you can get from their names. So let us get rid of this also. Again, there's a string embedded Python block example, a simple multiply const. Okay. So now if we look inside, what happens is that there's a init. This init is also called constructor. So this def init is like a method of the object. It's the constructor. So you don't need to know the full details, but this is what gets called when Python, when GNU radio first creates the object, you need to just say gr.sync block dot init and self. So basically you are going to call the sync blocks initialization name. Let us call it, let's say, uh, instead of embedded Python block, we'll call it my amplifier. Okay. The in sig and out sig are very important they determine what type the input is and what type the output is. In this case, the in sig, out sig, both are np.complex64. We will leave it like it is. And the self param equal to example param, basically this example param, which is 1.0 above, this is a parameter passed by GNU radio companion. To store it within the object, uh, within the instantiated object, you have to say self dot example param equal to example param. Only then the value is stored. Now, let us actually change this a little bit. Let's call this, instead of example param, let's call this amplification. And then here also we will call it amplification. And here also we'll call it amplification. Now, the next thing is that there is a function or method called work. This is the main function or method that does all the jobs. You get an input items, you get a, you get an output item. These are actually not n numpy arrays, but they are like lists of numpy arrays. They contain that many elements as the dimension. For example, in my case, in sig, np.complex64 implies that input items contains one element which is an umpy array. Out sig is np.complex64 which means my output items contains one element which is an umpy array. So this particular notation allows you to get that first element and write into it. So this essentially replaces those elements with whatever you write here. So what does this line do? Output items 0 that is the first output item colon allows you to write into it equal to input item 0 multiplied by self dot example param. This we will change to amplification. Return len output item 0. This tells GNU radio how many items you are actually going to return. In general, because it's a sync block, it is expected that the number of output items is equal to the number of input items in each of those streams. So now let's save and exit. Now let's say OK. Now let's execute it. So as you can see, you know, it did some, you know, it has this complex signal and you know, you have these red and blue, all those, all that is fine. But uh, let's check, let's make the amplification two. Now if you execute it, you can see that it actually amplified to two. But the thing is, I don't want this amplifier to work on complex samples because I get these, you know, uh, cos sign both because of the C par j omega naught t and everything. Let us actually make it work for real. So how do we make it work it work for real? I'm going to double click it, click open in editor and I'm going to now change the data types from complex 64 to float 32. Float 32 over here, oops. And float 32 over here. And I don't need to worry about the rest because GNU radio will make sure that these numpy arrays are now float arrays as opposed to complex arrays. So this code doesn't change. It will work as is. If I now save and say, okay, notice that because I've changed the types, num GNU radio has disconnected them and notice that the color is now orange indicating that this is a float. So let's change all our blocks to float starting with a signal source, then the throttle, our time sync. Let's also make our time sync have two inputs. So let's first add the, uh, let's just say two inputs. 
and now let's connect this over here let's connect the original input to the first one and let's connect the amplified one to the second one and now if I run my code you can clearly see that the signal 2 which is the second signal is clearly amplified by a factor of 2 okay so this is not still not you know very useful can I actually do some more things with this can I make this amplification a variable amount so what we do is we say control F for command F we say range and we get a QT GUI range and we double click this range and call, and we call it AMPL because I'm too lazy to type out amplification let its default value be 1 let it start at 0 go up to 10 and we'll say step point 1 okay and we'll change this to AMPL okay so let's execute our flow graph now if I increase the amplification you can clearly see that the red one gets amplified or you know if I if I make the amplification less than one it gets smaller and smaller and that's good but what if I want to have more parameters it's very easy you can just double click this amp particular my amplifier you can open in editor now let us also add the, a feature to introduce an offset into the signal so to do that we will first change this init function to accept another parameter called offset by default it should be zero we will store it self dot offset is equal to offset and finally over here we will just add the offset so what does this do this essentially amplifies your signal by amplification and adds the offset so that you can boost the signal by that much you can boost meaning you can raise it by that much so let us save and exit now we're going to call this a variable offset and say okay obviously offset is not defined since I'm too lazy to get another range I'm going to just click this hit ctrl C or command C ctrl V or command V I get a copy I, do I double click this and I'm going to now just call this offset now if I execute this flow graph as you can see oh offset is 1 okay fine let me make the offset 0 you can see that the offset is 0 they match if I start increasing the offset it goes up and down of course I can make the offset negative also if I let's make this less amplified and let's also introduce an offset so you can see that I am now able to take multiple parameters also let me now just make this amplifier work for two signals just you know just for curiosity so let's just take my amplifier and let's say that you have two signals so to, for two signals input and two signals output you don't need the inputs and output to be the same let's say that here you do have them to be the same you say you take a float 32 and you give out another float 32 then in this case you you can see you, you what you'll have is that the number of signals input is 2 the number of signals output is 2 so you can actually amplify them in parallel so by just adding this line and putting the one over here so this is going to amplify two signals concurrently so let's save this and now let's say okay as you can see you have two signals now so in the meanwhile let's make this have four inputs or la, 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 let's actually create a copy of this okay and now let us create copy the signal source by doing ctrl c ctrl v and let's make this into a let's say square wave okay square wave and let's connect the square wave original over here and the square wave amplification offset through here now if I execute this both of these are going to in experience the same kind of offset for example if I increase the offset it goes up and down together if I increase the amplification both of them amplify together right so if I increase the offset you can see both the sine and 
square go up if I increase the amplification both of them go up so what you have seen is that you can make python blocks rather easily without having to put in too much effort and the key idea that you're going to exploit here is that you can write arbitrary python functionality to process your arrays inside here by just clicking open in editor and writing appropriate python code now again like i keep mentioning while this is not mandatory to know there are several situations where writing the code in terms of a GNU radio block can make a lot of difference, can make the implementation a lot easier than having to use your own code. There is only one catch that I wish to warn you of. If you write the code in a very inefficient way and make it slow, that can slow down the performance of the whole block. So just be aware to write short, efficient code within your own blocks. Just to have another example, let us consider a decimation block just to add some variety. We will write a decimation block that does block based addition. That is, let's say it takes three numbers, adds them and gives you the sum, four numbers, adds them, gives you the sum and replaces every four numbers, let's say with a single number so that you have a decimation block. So we'll say control F for command F block we get a python block we double click it and we say open in editor and we open it in our favorite editor now we are going to use a decimation block and this requires some bit of changes so the first thing is that we derive from decim block as opposed to sync block we are going to just have one parameter which is the decimation rate which is an integer we are going to call this block adder because it's going to add based on blocks we we'll keep it as float 32 float 32 and we need to add another parameter called decim rate which we have to pass to the super class which is the decim block so now you have this decim block the self dot example param we'll just store the decim rate instead we also need to tell GNU radio that the relative rate of this block is 1 upon the decimation rate that is relative rate this will ensure that GNU radio knows that for every sample that comes in only half a sample goes out that is because if for example if the decimation rate is 2 you're only going to get for every two samples you're only going to get one output sample this is what GNU radio uses to check uh, to set the output length in the work function now in the work function the input items and output items would automatically be sized appropriately based on the decimation rate so now to do the block addition I am going to actually create a blank array and then start populating the contents inside so let's say I say result is np dot zeros and I'll say something like length of output items zero I guess that's one way to do it or we can say length of input item zero integer divided by self dot decim rate this will create a result array which is all zeros that contains exactly the input items divided by decimation rate number of zeros then I'm going to write a for loop in Python so I'm going to say for i in range self dot decimation rate so that I can start accumulating the array elements using offsets so I'm going to say result is equal to result plus now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the zeroth element then the dis the th let's say our decimation rate is four i will take the zeroth element the fourth element the eighth element the next i'll take the first element fifth element ninth element and so on so i'm going to say input items zero start with the ith element keep taking elements 
स्टेप बाई डेसीमेशन रेट एंड देन जस्ट सेट दिस टू बी द आउटपुट अरे सो वॉट डज दिस कोड मीन दिस पर्टिकुलर स्लाइस मीन दिस मीन्स स्टार्ट एट द आई एथ एलिमेंट गेट ऑल द एलिमेंट्स स्टेप्ड एट द सेम रेट फॉर दिस विल फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ इन द फर्स्ट रन ऑफ दिस लूप यू विल गेट द जीरो एलिमेंट द फोर्थ एलिमेंट the eighth element and so on assuming the same rate is 4 in the next run you'll get the first element the fifth element the ninth element and so on now in result right what happens is that the first element is going to have the 0 1 2 3 element added the second element is going to have the 1 0 4 uh, 5 6 7 you know seventh element added and so on and this will ensure that your four successive entries in input items get added up let's check this so now i'm going to save this and exit uh it says unexpected keyword okay we'll just check the code over here ah yes so this should be decim so this you can find out from the guru radio documentation okay so now now you can say okay okay so now let's add a throttle okay and we'll make the throttle for float to float and say okay then we will take a vector source because you will have easier control and see how this block behaves a vector source and we'll add a time sync control f command f time sync we'll add a time sync we'll set the time sync to float we'll set the vector source to float and the vector source let's give the elements we'll give it as a python list and gnu radio will take care of it we'll give 1 1 2 3 only these many because what you'll find is that gnu radio is going to repeat this and the result is going to be just the summation of these so let's check we'll connect this we'll connect this we'll connect this before we start 1 and 1 and 2 and 3 i think they add up to 7 okay keep that in mind oops so i think there is a small syntax error sorry yeah so there is no syntax error there is no syntax error we need to specify the decimation rate over here We'll set it to let's say four. That's what we need. Now let's execute this. Uh, uh, it's seven. Okay, why is it seven? Because every four elements are being added up. So if you don't believe me, let's make it eight elements and let's make this one, one minus one, minus one. So if you add these four elements, you get seven. If you add these four elements, you get zero. so you will get 7 followed by 0 followed by 7 followed by 0 and because you are decimating by 4 these four samples are going to th these you know this full eight sample cycle it's very easy to check will be 32k divided by 4 so 32k divided by 8 will be 4k 4k is uh, you know 4 kilohertz will be the frequency that corresponds to i think about uh, i think 20.25 milliseconds let's check oops yes so you get this kind of structure okay let's check the gap between the two peaks 14.0 14.06 14. 14.25 yeah i think uh, let's actually just do it in a slightly different way let's add more points 1 let's say 8192 Okay, so again, one one two three adds up to seven. One one minus one minus one adds up to zero. Okay, let's zoom in here. Let's zoom in here. Let's zoom in here. Let's zoom in here. Yes. So this point is at seven. Okay, because it's adding up as you go. One hundred seven point three. Is that one hundred seven point three seven? One hundred seven point three one. So it's 0.0625 yes 
So why is that the case? So there's eight samples. Yeah. So these, yeah. So there are eight samples over here. And because it undergoes a decimation rate of four, instead of 0.25 milliseconds, you get it at 0.25 milliseconds upon four. That corresponds to 0 0.0625 milliseconds. So if you look closely now over here, let's look closely. Okay, so let's look at these two peaks. This is around 16.25. This is at 16.31, which corresponds to 0 0.0625. That's the magic of this decimation. Let's change things around and let's say we make it 1, 1 followed by minus 1, 1. So 1, 1 followed by minus 1, let's say minus 1, minus 1 just to make it more fun. And let's make the decimation rate 2. So now you can clearly see that if the, the decimation rate is 2, you get 2, 0, 2, 0. If you make the decimation rate 1, it doesn't do this addition and you get something like a square wave because you have two samples of 1, two samples of minus 1 and so on. So this is definitely key to understanding how this works. So what we've seen is that you can get adders uh, or you can, sorry, you can get blocks which have this different decimation rates as well and make your own blocks and you can check the GNU radio documentation to understand how you can use this feature for good effect. What we just saw was a very basic introduction to how you can use Python in order to extend the functionalities of GNU radio. In particular, you were able to write embedded Python blocks where you can just insert pieces of Python code to perform processing in a very efficient way. Just keep in mind that while writing blocks does look attractive, there is always a balance. Writing really complicated processing in blocks will end up slowing down your flow graph because if you write a lot of Python computations inefficiently, then you may end up hurting the performance of your simulation. However, in several situations where it is easier to express some functionality or some processing using a few lines of Python code rather than bringing in a lot of blocks and performing a lot of wiring, then use of an embedded Python block is a very good way to extend the functionality of GNU Radio. I encourage you to read the GNU Radio documentation on, uh, the, uh, on writing your own blocks both in Python and C++ so that when the need arises, you can implement your own blocks efficiently. Thank you.